special night. So we won't read the scripture, the whole scripture again, amen, but I will read the last part, amen, verse 25, where he said, Nebuchadnezzar said, he said, um, did we not cast in three men down into the midst of the fire? And they said unto the king, true, O king, and he answered and said, but I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt, and the fourth, and the form of the fourth is like the son of God. And Nebuchadnezzar came near the mouth of the burning fire and furnace and spake and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, ye servants of the Most High God, come forth and come hither. And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came forth out of the midst of the fire. Amen? Amen. amen. Can, I, can I just take a minute? I'm, I'm looking at our time. Let me just take a minute this morning, amen, and preach from the subject, amen. We're going to get through this. Amen. We're going to get through this. Amen. We're going to get through this. Help me, Holy Spirit, on this day. Amen. <coughs> Pass this week. Flesh, touch, spirit, not preaching easy. God, we pray that you would give us all you got on this day so that we might give it all. Amen. To your people. Oh touch us from the back to the front. Make us different, maybe. Amen. Than the way we came in for the better. Father, when it's all said and done, we'll remember to give you honor. Glory and praise. We bless you on this day. Father, to be your will to touch our heart and our mind as you have done over the last few weeks. Lord God, if it be your will, have someone come running asking, what must I do to be saved? God, we continue to pray, amen, that you would find us in that pilot branch to be the apple of your eye, and that you might find us worthy, amen, to have those come forth to be saved, daily, such as you see fit. We bless you on this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the church say amen. 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 We're going to get through this. Amen. So as we enter uh, into the third week of Black History Month, I want to pause again to remember and thank those, amen, those who, who suffered, those who bled and sometimes died so that you and I could enjoy the, the, the guaranteed rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness that was written in this nation's constitution. And we pause, amen, you say, why, you've been doing that every, amen, Sunday. Well, we're going to do it again because, amen, we honor them because those are the folks that face, amen, trumped up charges and jail time, and they did it for us, y'all. They're the ones that face the barking dogs and, and the biting dogs, and they did it for us. Huh? It was, they faced the full fire hoses and police brutality. They went through fiery furnaces all over and over again because of the attitude of a nation that saw nothing wrong with systematically and discriminately denying folks the basics of life. Huh? Amen. So that we, amen, could be free mentally, spiritually, amen, physically, and financially. So we're going to honor them again because they refused to bow down to the kings of this world and they did it just for us. But understand this morning, as, as I've done all week, as we pause to remember their good works, we're smart enough to realize, amen, that they were just vessels. They were just servants who knew that if they had truth on their side, they, they had justice on their side, they had, amen, the support of many folks in the, amen, on their side. But more than that, they knew that they had God on their side, y'all. And that's where they put their faith. That, that's where they put their trust. Uh, uh, because somewhere they had read uh, from Genesis to Revelation about rulers and principalities that will come to kill, steal, and destroy. So, somewhere they had read that there were all always be those in power who would want to push their own selfish agenda on a nation. Somewhere they read, amen, in those God-breathing inspired stories that God had always heard the cries of injustice against his children. And every time God showed up, every time God showed out. And so there was no march, there was no boycott, there was no city started and proceeded without prayer and invoking the presence and power of God. And why? So no matter how bad it looked at the time, they pressed forward with the mindset that with God, all things are possible. And we going to get through this because the fourth one is in the house. Huh? 
Oh, 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 we're going to look at this familiar scripture. I'm glad y'all know it. Amen. The, about the three young men in Babylon in trouble because they refused to bow. And, and they've taken a stand on what they believe to be right and are willing to die for it if need be. I'm glad you know the story so we can just synopsize what's going on. You already know that King Amen, Nebuchadnezzar had built the gold statue. You already know that he put it on Dura Plain in the province of Babylon. You already know that he ordered, amen, important leaders in the province and everybody, amen, at the dedication, amen, and when they got before the statue, when the, amen, when they heard the sound of the trump, everybody, every race, every color, every creed, amen, when they heard the sound of the trumpet was supposed to fall to their knees and worship the gold statue, amen, that the king had set up. And the clear, amen, amen, instructions was anybody who did not, amen, kneel was going to be immediately thrown into the roaring furnace. Mm -hmm. And when the time came, everybody fell to their knees except Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Come on, somebody. Uh -huh. You might recall, amen, that they did not, amen, go. And so, amen, you might recall that there were some haters hanging around the courtyard and watching. Not trying to stir up trouble because these young men had made a decision to hold on to what they knew was right and they would not bow down. Bible says the haters went to the King Nebuchadnezzar and sucked up to him. Y'all know what that's like. Y'all got some of the people at y'all job talking about some long live the king. Huh? But then they start causing hate and contempt, y'all. Hate and discontent. That, that's why they call haters. Because discontentors don't sound right. Help me, Holy Spirit. And so the king gave strict orders. And I said everybody fall to their knees. Hey Amen. Where, where them gentlemen? You bring them Jews up in here. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Are you ignoring me? Are you disrespecting me? I want you to worship and fall down before this gold statue. Can I just tell you point number one? There's nothing new under the sun. And so wherever you try to take a stand for right, Amen. Expect haters to come and stir up trouble. I'll tell your neighbor, I know that's right. Huh? Oh, yes, it is. And here's the other thing. Haters are already here. Huh? You know, that used to be a, um, a show that came on that aired during Black History Month called Eyes on the Prize. It was a good series. Uh, it was narrated by Junior Bond, amen, and, and it talked about the events of the Civil Rights era, covered the years from 654 to uh, 1985, talking about Rosa Parks and, amen, Dr. King, the Montgomery Force, a uh, bus boycott. It talked about, amen, how the Black Power Movement started. It talked about, amen, the struggle of, of amen, instituting the voting right act of 1965, and, and, and I'm, I think I'm going to buy that. I'm going to start showing that every year because it's a good record, amen, of our history because it, it, it highlights the key players, but even more so, it shows us, and it, it'll show our children, the level of opposition that was faced when somebody took the, amen, the blessing, amen, to stand up for what is right. Hmm? Another good one is uh, called Freedom Riders. It tells a story of, amen, the summer of 61 when over 400, amen, black and white Americans put their lives on the line, traveled by bus and by train into the segregated South, amen, to not only protest segregation, but intentionally violating Jim Crow laws on purpose, drinking out the wrong water fountain and stuff. Y'all hear what I'm saying? And, and the story shows the level of racism and, and, and violence they encountered as these faithful men and women, amen, a lot of them ministers, took a stand for what was right and for righteousness. I, I, the film, amen, maker said, the lesson of freedom, right, is that great change can come, amen, from a few steps taken by courageous people. The point here is, every time, amen, we take a stand for right, every time you see a wrong and you try to right it, every time you speak up above the lies so that your voice of truth can be heard, you can count on haters of this world showing up and trying to distract, trying to discourage, and trying to destroy the good work that God is coming to do. But I've come to tell somebody today, let the haters hate. Not let the enemies come. Because my God has already promised y'all that if we stay strong and if we stay courageous, if, if we obey his word, he, didn't he say he would make our enemies and then our footstools? Didn't he say that when they come up against us, they would fall in seven ways? Didn't he say 
said he would make us the head and not the tail, the lender and not the borrower. Then he say we would be above and not the knee. Amen. And that's why today we are not the eating man. Help me, Holy Ghost. Because greater is the God that's in us than he that's in the world. Huh? And the hater, amen, in the world, I mean, need to be brought to attention to understand God said, no weapon against us, formed against us shall prosper. God said he will comfort us even in the valley of the shadow of death. God said in times of trouble, he would hide us. Am I right about it? In his pavilion, amen, he said he would kind of allow us to abide under the safety of his wings. So come on, hater. Shoot your best shot. But we're going to keep on holding on. Because you can't stop us from receiving what God got for us. Huh? Can't no law, can't nobody, amen, stop what God has for us. And so we know that we know that we know that we know that no matter what they say on the news, and no matter what they put on the internet, and no matter what's on Facebook or Twitter, we're going to get through this because the fourth one is in the house. We're going to get through it. King Nebuchadnezzar got mad at the boys. Got mad at them. Told them, hey "Amen. We're gonna heat up the. We're gonna heat up the furnace. Hey Amen. You don't. You don't bow down. I'm gonna throw you in the fire. We give you a second chance. Hey Amen. Well, you, if you, well, I ain't worried about it, King. You know what? I said right here. All three of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered the king and said, "You know what? Let me let me break it down in the modern term. But we don't even see nothing but your lips moving. Your threat don't mean nothing to us." If you throw us in the fire, the God we serve, help me, Holy Ghost. He gonna say, Amen, save us from the furnace. And anything else you might try to cook up, O King. Uh -huh. But even if God decides not to save us, even if he don't deliver us, it won't make one bit of difference. Help me, Holy Ghost. Because we still ain't gonna serve your God. We still not gonna worship a gold statue. We still not gonna bow down. Let me say point number two, when you take a stand for the right thing, not only will haters come, but trouble going to come with them. Uh-huh, uh-huh, oh yeah. Fire furnaces of life are waiting for those who refuse to compromise. It's waiting for those who dare to call out wrong. It's, it's waiting for those who won't go along with the crowd. It's waiting for those who refuse to bow down. And, and when I think about our ancestors and uh, who came over, amen, in chains, and even the folks who took a stand during the civil rights era and all they endured, I take my hat off to them because I don't know if we who are alive and remain today still got that level of strength or uh, amen fortitude in us to get the job done. Huh? We have not compromised on purpose, but the threat that comes with not bowing down would have kept most of us from being able to do what they did. Huh? And, and, and what we must do even now as a nation. Think about it. We are walking in the third line of the march. Lock. We shall overcome. That's the tune we sing. Police up their head. They beat their building clubs against their hand like this. Waiting on you. The warrior spirit in us, amen, that we got from the motherland tells us, keep on marching. Amen. And keep on marching. It's, our heart is captured in the in the chant that we're singing. Ain't gonna let nobody turn me around. Turn me around. That's the chant that we're singing. That's the tune that we got. Amen. All locked up. But after we watch the first row of the biggest, baddest guys get whipped almost to death. And then we see the second row go down like the first. For some reason, everybody probably would change their tune. And amen, our tune might change from amen, ain't gonna let nobody turn me around to I gotta go find a hiding place. <laughs> huh? Because amen, they, we still know what's going on is not right, but many people would feel like they got no choice. Either stop marching or possibly die. So glad when those civil rights pioneers were faced, amen, with the same scenario, I'm so glad they kept the faith. Aren't you glad about it? I'm glad they took the licks. I'm glad they took the billy clubs. I'm glad they took the dog bites and let God fight and win the battle. But we need to understand we all got to go through some fire and burning situation in this life when you stand up for what's right. Huh? And many times, amen, we will change our tune. Amen, no mean to, but, but sometimes we feel 
the need, amen, to change our tune to keep our popularity rating among our peers. But sometimes we do it because we got to keep our job, even if it means doing something, amen, that we know is not right. Sometimes we do it, amen, because, amen, there's a lot going on these days where you, amen, want to keep your position. Huh? And the rationale is, well, it really ain't that wrong. But I'm telling you something. Some folks will say it's better to go along with the crowd than to go into the furnace. Well, now I want y'all to know this morning, God is calling for people to stay on the battlefield. And he's telling you, I want you to do what you said you was going to do. You promised me. You said, I promised you that I will serve you till I die. And so as long as you got breath in your body, I expect you to serve. As long as you got a choice, I expect you to serve. And you better make the right choice because if you choose to bow down now before Baal, if you choose to bow down before the world, if you choose to bow down just to save your job, if you choose to bow down the world over God, if you deny him to keep your position, to keep your pay, to keep your prosperity, to keep your privilege, just know that there's a day coming, help me God, when you're going to have to go into another valley furnace, because that one is eternal, because Jesus said himself, if you deny me before men, act like you don't know me before men, when it's my turn to vouch for you, I'm going to deny you from the Father. So your answer better be today and forevermore. Amen. Your actions ought to reflect. But as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Huh? Do whatever you want to do to us. But just know, amen, we're going to get through this because the fourth one is in the house. And let me, let, me, let me just point out something real quick. I got a minute. God also wants us to notice something that's often overlooked when people talk about this scripture. See, trouble was coming to all three young men. The threat of death was coming to all three young men. And yet, none of them took the opportunity to let the other person take the heat. None of them took the opportunity to throw somebody under the bus. Nobody dropped the dime on nobody else. All three of them, when you go and look at the word, it didn't say that Meshach spoke. It didn't say that Shadrach spoke. It said all three of them, amen, answered the king. They all spoke from the same thought, from the same mind. All of them taking a stand for what is right in the Lord. And you might not know this, but the population, amen, of black folks today in the United States is 43.8 million. As of last, amen, census. That's why you telling us that, Pastor. Because if we ever get our act together, if we ever move toward being a one accord, if we ever get on the same mind, if we ever decide that no matter what, we going to overcome, not one of us overcome, not some of us overcome, but all of us overcome, and we start praying like we ought to do and believing like we're called to do, then amen, a lot of what's going on with us and going on in our homes and going on in our children, our community, our life, and our church can be fixed up. And we can manhandle and womanhandle the enemy according to the power that work within us. Huh? You believe that, Pastor? Sure I do. Because if I can put a thousand demons to flight, and two of us can put 10,000 to flight, and if I recall the math process that's in work here correctly, that would mean three could handle a hundred thousand. Help me, Holy Ghost. And four could kick out one million. So imagine what we could do if 43.8 million folk would stop worrying about the haters and stop looking at the trouble and get on one accord. Amen. And I know that when two or more gathered in his name, that he's in the midst. But we should never be satisfied with two or three fighting for 43.8 million. All of us got a stake in the battle. Am I right about it? All of us got work to do. All of us got to take a stand for one. All of us, amen, ought to not bow down and worship nothing except God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And if we refuse to bow down, and if we all stand in the Lord and in his power of the might, then we can hasten the day, amen. We can make the dream come when justice rolls down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. When the crooked places are made straight and high places are made low and all God's 
children get the opportunity, amen, to see the glory of the coming of the Lord. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Through the men in the furnace. Throw them in there. Y'all know the stir. Throw them in. Heated up the oven. The oven was so hot it burned up the strong men to throw them in. That's how God take care of your haters. Uh-huh. Burn them right on up. Throw them in there, amen. Throw them in. And they were walking around. They fell down. I like what it said when they threw them in. They fell down in the midst of the furnace. Amen. Wasn't no tricks. No Houdini stuff going on. Uh -huh. But the king got up and looked up in the, amen, looked inside the furnace. That's my invitation to cleaning off the glass. Amen. Amen. He said, didn't we throw three folk up in there? Yeah, king, we, we threw three up in there. He said, well, I see four men loose. They're walking around in the midst. They ain't even on their knees no more. They, they ain't walking around. They ain't hurt. And the fourth one is in the form like the Son of God. You see what's going on, right? Three men went in, standing up for right in the name of God. And God was already in there. And he was standing up for them in the midst of right. See, the promise is, y'all, that we shall eat at the table. The, the promise is our cups will be filled till they overflow. Our, the promise is that our head will be anointed with oil, that we shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty in the house forevermore. But you got to understand that like the pioneers before us, and then when you see something that's wrong, you can't bow down, but you got to get out. You, you got to go make a stand. You got to leave the steel waters. You got to get away from the quiet streams. You got to walk out of the lush meadows grass and prepare to go in the valley. And yes, it's death-like. And then yes, it's scary. But I have learned that by faith I can praise God even in the midst of the valley. I can give him a hallelujah show even in the midst of the valley because as bad as things look to my eyes, I always got to factor in the unseen. As bad as the situation looks, I always got to factor in that his rod and staff comfort me. As bad as things seem to be, you always got to factor in that the fourth one is at the house and he looks like the son of God. Oh, help me, Father. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Anybody ever been in the fire? Uh, here's funny. Nebuchadnezzar said he looked like the son of God because he ain't never seen God. Matter of fact, when the story started, remember, he didn't even acknowledge who God was. So, of course, he didn't know what the son of God looked like. But, hey, amen, something put it on his mind that what I'm seeing is not the natural. What I'm seeing is, hey, amen, supernatural. And what I'm seeing is something dropped in his nose saying, it ain't three men burning up. Hey, amen. So whoever that is walking around, that must be, hey, amen, like the form of the Son of God. He didn't know what he looked like. But we do know what God looked like, don't we? Ever been in the fire? We know what he looked like, don't we, y'all? Because when we've been there, we see him, don't we, y'all? Don't we see God in the fire? We see him, help the Holy Ghost, and he looks like bread when you're hungry. We see him, and he looks like water when you're thirsty. Anybody seen God in the fire? We see him, and he looks like peace when your life is in turmoil. He looks like healing when you're dealing with sickness. Anybody ever seen him in the fire? Help the Holy Ghost. He's like strength when you're weak. He's a bridge over troubled water. Anybody ever seen him in the fire? He a mama when you got a motherless. Father when you're fatherless. Help me God. He's a husband for those who are blueless. He's a friend if you're friendless. Anybody ever seen him in the midst of the fire? Because he's walking and he looks like the son of God. Let me get out of here. We know how the story ended. Nebuchadnezzar recognized, hey amen, after he saw what was going on, that these three, these young Jews, were servants of the Most High God. That's what he said. That came out of his mouth. And he said, come on out the furnace. Huh? And they came out the fire. Hey amen. The Bible said they didn't smell like smoke. Clothes not burned. Not even a hair. Your hair is the first thing to catch on fire. Am I right about it, Michael Jackson? Uh-huh. Y'all got that. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. But not even a smell of smoke. Everybody was amazed. And the king, amen, had to admit.
admit that there is a power greater than my own. Oh, help me, Holy Spirit. Huh? There is a power greater than my own. And you know what's funny? He didn't do like some of the folks in our history, as you read, amen, the eye on the prize. He didn't do like the governor of Georgia back in the day. He didn't do like, amen, Bull Connor, help me, Holy Ghost. He, amen, did not harden his heart, but he made man, he uh, humbled himself before a mighty God, amen, and said that the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego has delivered them, and nobody did not say a word against them. God. Let me get out of here. Remember, James, as we go through, because, amen, that's still, I, I like the, the, the uh, title of yesterday's program for Sunday School was, we still on the battlefield. Anybody who think that we already done won the war, you just fooling yourself. Help me, Holy Spirit. We still on the battlefield. But I've come to encourage somebody with the words that Brother James said that, and understand, amen, you might not be marching for something today, but you're still standing up for what's right. Huh? And every time you stand up for what's right, trouble will come. Am I right about it this morning? But I've come to tell you, whenever you face the trials of life, James said, amen, know that it's the testing of your faith, and it's trying to develop your patience, and patience must have its perfect work, so that when the end is done, you will be mature, you will be whole, you will be complete, and you won't be lacking anything. And so what it says is, blessed is the man who perseveres under trial. Because when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. Huh? I like it. Peter said it even better. Don't think it's strange, deacons. Don't think it's strange, trustees. Don't think it's strange, ministers. Don't think it's strange, kind of branch, concerning the fiery trial when it comes to trial. Yeah. Don't act like it's some strange thing happening to you. But you need to rejoice. Help me, Holy Ghost. You need to rejoice, y'all. And to the extent that you are partaking in Christ's suffering. So when his glory is revealed, you, amen, may all also be glad with exceeding joy. I want to be reminded this morning that yeah, we got to go through some stuff, but the fourth one is in the house. Yeah, we got to deal with adversity, but the fourth one is in the house. Can I get a witness? There are going to be some valid kind of situation, but the fourth one is in the house. And you need to make up in your mind that I'm going to stand and have it done all I can. I'm going to stand therefore in the whole armor of God. The witness trial is over. When the storm has passed, when I make it out of this fire, I'm going to come forth as pure gold. Mark didn't know how right he was when he stood before that crowd that April 3rd night in Memphis. He said God had taken him to the mountaintop and allowed him to see the promised land. But before we got there, there were going to be some difficult days ahead. Huh? We are still going through difficult days. Can I get a witness? We're going to find out over the next few years just how difficult those days are. We're going to find out over the next few years that we are not out of the fire yet. But no matter the neighborhood that we've been allowed to live in, there's still difficult days ahead. No matter the title on your desk, there's still difficult days ahead. I don't care what famous brand of cars in the driveway or the hootie to the friends you hang around with. There are some things that we're going to have to deal with. There are some difficult days ahead that's going to shake us and wake us and remind us we're still in the fire. But rest assured, y'all, we're not in the fire alone. The fourth one is also there, and he is the son of God. How can you be so sure, Pastor? Because he said so. Help me, Holy Ghost. Then he said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Then he said he'd be with us always until the end of the world. Then he say he would be an ever-present help in time of trouble. Then he say he would prevent us from falling. Can I get a witness today? I don't know about nobody else, but I believe the Lord. I don't know, but I believe the Lord because I know he's got all power in heaven and earth in his hand. And because I know that the earth and that man is healed and the fullness therein, I know that I know that I know that I know that come what may, we gonna get through this. Because the fourth one is in the house. One of my favorite singers out of my hometown Durham, North Carolina, inside the county line. Mm -hmm. 
Sure, see the set. You can make it. You can make it. This trial you're going through. God's going to show you just what to do. You can make it. Well, you can make it. I don't care what's going wrong. God won't let it last too long. You're not in this thing alone. No, no, no. You can make it. Y'all don't hear me, huh? I said you can make it. I feel it in my sanctified back so you can make it. This trial you're going through. God's going to show you what to do. You can make it. You can make it. Tell your neighbor, I don't care what's going wrong. God won't let it last too long. You're not in this thing alone. You can make, you can, you can make it. And if the church agrees, let the church say, Amen.